We welcome you back to Longhorn Weekly with head coach Shaka Smart from here at Pluckers, the West Campus location. And we always leave it to the coach for the introductions, and uh, this young man deserves uh, quite the introduction, Shaka. Well, we're really excited to have Kai here today. Kai Jones, freshman forward from the Bahamas, uh, and uh, a young man that's just getting better and better, and uh, someone we're really excited to have in our program. Okay, now this is open the door to all kinds of questions. It started off, let me, let me start off from both of your perspectives about how a guy from the Bahamas by way of Brewster Academy in New Hampshire winds up as a Texas Longhorn. Well, I mean, really the same way as anyone else, but, you know, Kai, and he can tell you more about his journey. He probably has had more twists and turns in terms of, uh, you know, his, his journey as a young man, his journey as a basketball player over the past several years than, than anybody. Um, you know, we were made aware of him a couple springs ago, um, and, you know, the first thing I, I, I saw was, you know, like everyone else nowadays is on my phone. And I just saw a guy with incredible energy and uh, what looked like a ton of upside, a lot of potential, a lot of athleticism. And you know, we, started, we started recruiting him, started talking to him, and it became really, really easy to tell over the phone that he had just an infectious spirit about him and, and a really good uh, personal foundation, you know, just as a person. So uh, those things all combined to make us really, really interested in him and Fortunately, the recruiting process worked out, and now here he is. Now, Kai, for folks who don't know, it's not like you were always viewed in the prism in in, in uh, the Bahamas as being a great basketball player, right? Yeah. I mean, you you, you kind of had to work through all of this process, yeah, didn't you? Yeah, I actually was a track athlete. Um, to start, I ran track growing up. Everybody knew me for being a long jumper and high jumper. I was on a few national teams, but uh, I didn't start playing until I moved to the States at age 12, 11. I would play pickup outside, but... I didn't play any organized ball until I was 15, and then when I went back home, I had a huge growth spurt, and everybody saw how much better I had gotten, and then people started to know me around town as a basketball player. Now, did you always, when you were younger, did you just flat out like track and field better than basketball? Yeah, was that it. how it worked out? I loved it way more. You know, track is much bigger in the Bahamas than basketball is, and um, I watch a lot of Olympic games. I was a huge Usain Bolt fan, Carl Lewis, Mike Powell. So track was much bigger back home, but I loved it more. The other thing, Craig, is, you know, Kyle, I'll tell you, Year by year, if you ask him, you know, there was multiple years where he was cut from his basketball team. Yep. So he didn't, you know, you tend to love the thing that you're, you're better, better at. And he, yeah. was, he was really, really good in track. And obviously, if you watch him run now, you can see why. Yeah. yeah. That, so, so when you were getting cut from basketball teams, did it just go in your mind, this is not for me, I'm not going to do this? Or, or did, it, 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 did it always stay in the back of your mind? Uh, it always in the, was in the back of my mind because I always watch it on TV. I always love to watch it. I always love LeBron James. But – Growing up in the sixth grade, I was cut. The seventh grade, I got cut. But I was doing track at the same time. But the year that really hit me was eighth grade when I got cut because that's when I worked the hardest. But, I mean, like, I loved track, and I just stuck with it. But then basketball came along. What were your coaches years. telling you when they were cutting you? What were they saying to you about why you were not good enough to make the basketball team? <laughs> in eighth grade, the coach was just like, um, I mean, I personally think it was probably some favoritism. You know, nobody. Okay. I wasn't really, like, in tune with the coach like that because I did track. I wasn't always around the coach. But he was just like, man, you're just a little too short. Um, you really have a position. We can't put you at the point. You're only 5'11". So, like, I just – he thought I wasn't good enough. Yeah, but it, it, has he since, like, gotten back with you and said, oh, I've, by the way, you turned out I've okay with I've never basketball. heard from him. That's the crazy <laughs> part. I always wonder if he sees me, like, playing now. But I've never heard from him since. I heard from him once in, like, 10th grade. Um, but, like, nah, I haven't heard from him. I wonder I wonder if he knows how I'm playing now or how I, it turned out. I, I have a feeling he probably yeah. knows. <laughs> I, 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 I just have it. And, Shaka, we've talked about this before, the – the um, dynamic of when coaches view student athletes, sometimes not necessarily when they started out as, a, in this case, a pure basketball player, how you see the basketball player in the athlete. Well, I think for Kai, a couple of things. One, when he went through that experience, the humbling experience of you know, being told literally you can't uh, be a part of this team in eighth grade or, or, or some of those years, that created in him – something that I think he'll never lose, which is a mentality of, I got something to prove. Um, and yeah. I think that really serves him well now. Um, even, you know, now he's made it to this level and 
uh, you know, starting to do some really, really good things. But he's always going to have that, something to prove. And I, I think, again, that's going to help him in his future. And then the other thing about it was, uh, you know, some of these guys gain a complacency, which I guess would be the, the flip side of that. Right. And Kai never really had that because, you know, he, he, he wasn't – not a lot, he didn't have a lot of people telling him, hey, you're great. Right. Uh, then the recruiting process started to occur – at the really his senior year, because he yeah. did an, he did a post grad year, um, and he can tell you about a senior year. He didn't get cut, but he didn't play very much. No, yeah. Uh, so it, it's just a, an interesting story. In a lot of ways, he has some similarities with Jackson Hayes. Yeah. Now, did you, Kai, when you were uh, on your team, uh, junior senior year, and you weren't playing that much? Did you um, were you surprised when you started to get interest? from schools about playing it at the next level? I wasn't surprised at all because I really put in a lot of work, um, and I worked really hard. So even when I wasn't playing, I was working out at 5 a.m. every day uh, with my trainer and with some of the guys on the team. Uh, I stayed with them. We were real close, and we're still close to this day. Uh, my friend Nasi Lilly plays in the NBA now for the Portland Trailblazers. We would work out every day at 5, so like I knew that Whatever you reap is what you sow. So I just kept putting in the work and putting in the deposits, like Coach says, and I knew something good was going to come from it. Were there people still tugging on you to go back to track? Oh, uh, no, not, <laughs> not a, I was 6'9 at the time. <laughs> That's a good point. I started to think in my mind maybe I should, but like I was like, no, man, I'm, I'm too invested. I put too much into it. Shaka, where has Kai come farthest since you first began the recruiting process, and, and where do you think his greatest leap will come as a basketball player going forward? Well, he's a guy that, you know, like certain other guys that we've had, um, his best basketball is, is way ahead of him. Uh, but he is also capable right now of really impacting the game, as you saw last night at Oklahoma mm -hmm. State. Um, you know, to have five blocks uh, in, in 16, 17 minutes is, is huge. Uh, and he also rebounded the, well, the ball extremely well. His activity, the way he runs, the way he's around plays – uh, is, is a huge component for our team. We need that. We don't have anyone else like him. Uh, I think where he's grown the most uh, since he got here is he's become much sturdier, you know, because as you can see, he's more athletic than he is strong at this right. point. Mm -hmm. And uh, trust me, in about five years, this guy is going to be, he's going to have an unbelievable body in terms of strength. It, that just takes time. Um, you know, so right now, He's working to adjust to the physicality of the game, um, the speed at which certain decisions have to be made, uh, yeah. but he's getting more and more active as the game goes on. Kai, with regard to the strength and conditioning thing, uh, how different has it been for you with Coach Hootie, with the coaching staff, with the training and conditioning staff to try to transform your body? How much of an adjustment has that been for you? It's been quite an adjustment. Um, I've had strength coaches in the past work on me with my athleticism and, like, just my body but this year has been more of a focus on my nutrition and my eating um from the moment I stepped foot on campus like I spent a lot of time in the, in the um tank in eating the tank. a lot of food eating mm -hmm. a lot of eggs like I had the same thing for breakfast every morning eggs bacon hash browns like for a month straight so it's a lot more eating uh, but that's that I've never had so many people on me at the same time about my nutrition and just documenting my nutrition kind of being a professional with it what what did you eat the most that didn't help you nutritionally that you don't eat now? Uh, I mean, right now, I never was quite an unhealthy eater. The focus now is just eating as much as possible Volume. and eating everything in sight. So I wasn't eating enough. It wasn't that I was eating the wrong things. I think I was eating too much of the right things that was keeping me slim. Um, but I, right now, it's just about volume and eating as much as possible, anything in sight. We should all have that problem, eating too much <laughs> of the right things, right? Uh, we're going to continue with Kai Jones here from Pluckers, the West Campus location here in Austin with Longhorn Weekly with head coach Shaka Smart continues in a moment. Andrew Jones on the right side, cross-court pass. Jace Fevers driving in and then drops it off. Kai Jones, he'll fire up a three. Good! Kai Jones, the freshman, nailing the three-pointer, and the Horns are up double digits, 29-17. 
Back here on Longhorn Weekly from Pluckers, the West Campus location here in Austin. Our special guest during this portion of the program, Longhorn's freshman Kai Jones. You just uh, heard, and for those of you watching, saw that three-pointer. How comfortable are you shooting a three? Oh, I'm pretty comfortable. I work on it a lot. Uh, yeah. I put a lot of time into it, so I try to shoot the right ones. Uh, when I step in and I see the rim, if I'm open, I'm going to let it go. One thing Coach talked about was the block shots. You had five of those in 17 minutes. Uh, I know there's technique involved and effort and all those kinds of things. How much is anticipation of what you're seeing as it develops? And is the old thing about athletes saying the game's slowing down for them a little bit, has yep. that kind of started to happen for you? It definitely happened when my minutes increased. I started to see stuff and see patterns like, with the roll and replace, like I had heard Coach Yock talk about, it. he talks about it so much. He does a good job with the scout reporter letting us know. And when you kind of see it happening on the floor, it kind of like clicks in your brain, and you know, okay, I can go get this block. Like if you saw the one when the guy was gonna get the dunk, that was a roll and replace play, and I just knew. Now, uh, now I just asked Coach about uh, where you've come farthest in your game and where where you can you know really go better. How about your own thoughts? Where 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 have you come farthest as a basketball player, and where do you still feel? you can have your biggest improvement? Uh, I feel obviously my, my body, you know, my body's improved a lot since being here, but it's mainly been mental for me, you know, just growing mentally as a player, as a young man. Uh, coach said before I got on campus that the key to your freshman year is how you respond when things don't go your way. And I always heard him saying, and I was like, why does he keep thinking things aren't going to go my way? I think everything's going to go great. Uh, but when I got here, I realized, okay, yeah, that, that's, that's, a true, that's a true statement. Like you have to just, be able to respond and be able to respond when things don't go your way and respond when they do. All right. So you were born in the Bahamas. You lived there till you were 12, was yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, okay. You, you and I have something in common you don't realize. We have each have four siblings. Right. Now, all of your siblings are younger than you, right? Yes, sir. And and that kind of plays into your decision to wear the number 22. Is that correct? Yes, sir. T explain that. So two plus two equals four, and I have four siblings, so... So it's it's it, deuce, so deuce. each number represents two of your siblings put <laughs> yes, together. Sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, the uh, I'm I'm also interested in, uh, when you came to um, the United States. You went to Orlando uh, during your senior year in high school. Yes, sir. What was the the transition like? First of all, when you went from the Bahamas to the U.S. Mm -hmm. and then in the high school in Orlando. So that was my first time uh, coming to school for basketball. So um, it was tough for me. You know, like I had to just lock in a lot on basketball, and I was at the school for basketball. So it was a lot of time commitment, but, you know, I loved the game, so I was ready for it. But that was the biggest adjustment for me. Uh, okay, now the other thing is uh, folks who follow college basketball closely are probably well acquainted with Brewster Academy in, in New Hampshire. There's been some, uh, some outstanding players who went through uh, Brewster Academy. That had to be, I got to believe, quite a difference for you mm -hmm. first in the Bahamas then you're in Florida now yes, you're sir. in New Hampshire during yeah. basketball what was that whole experience like being uh, at, at, at the Brewster. prep school there at Brewster? Brewster is an amazing school I had a phenomenal time um I really think about it all the time like I was so blessed to be in that position I had a great time with my teammates we were able to end out our high school careers with a national prep championship so that was a sweet taste in the mouth to leave that school with but coach Smith's a phenomenal coach and he really knows how to get the best out of his players. So I had a great time there. I loved it. Uh, all right. What, what about the lifestyle adjustment to living oh, in the state the of New cold. Hampshire? It's oh, yes. Isn't it? The cold was something else. I'd wake up some mornings and it would be negative two. I think my thermometer was broken or something. But it, it was definitely an adjustment. It was very cold up there. But I liked it. You know, I, I grew to like the cold the more I was there and the winters were the winter was pretty nice. And Wolfboro is a beautiful town. So you, you would love it if you go up there. It's very small and quaint but once you get used to it it's actually kind of it's kind of nice what do you like best about being a student and a student athlete at the university of texas what do you like best about being here as a student and student athlete uh just being in a place where you have so many people around you that are all about making you a better individual a better basketball player and a better young man and a better student so uh it, it's awesome to have a lot of people in your corner you feel like you have a lot of people trying to get the best out of you and that's always a great feeling so well, Looks like you're off to a good start. Appreciate you dropping yes, by. All yes, right, Kai Jones with us. Uh, coming up, Coach Smart and I will uh, talk about some of your questions, some other things happening as well with Big 12 basketball and more with Longhorn Weekly from here at Pluckers. The West Campus location in Austin continues here on the Longhorn Network and the Longhorn Radio Network from Learfield IMG College.